Nathan here, welcome back to another video for the PGL 2D Alpha series. And one comment I want to make before we jump into the next video is when you work on a project and then you think you are doing good things, you realize that going back you can clean things up and kind of trim things out and kind of move things around to make it much better and that's what I've been doing in the previous videos of this as I discuss it with you guys I can see oh I can do this better before in the alpha build that I'm basing this on I had the capability to support mouse input I did not use that at all. You could not get further. You could not even call that because it didn't fully support it. I just added that for an after the fact for our beta build. So since I'm not going I'm not using that now, there's no reason to have that in the alpha build. So I have removed the mouse state mouse everything related to mice in this alpha version. We will add that back in the beta version when I work on the tower defense game. So I just wanted to throw that out there that after you finish a project give it some time and then come back and take a look at it maybe explain it to a friend they don't even have to know programming just sit down and explain to it or just sit down and talk to yourself about it kind of pretend like you're doing a recording because that will give you the opportunity to look at it in a different view because i'm looking at this in a, in a different view where I'm showing you guys how to create this instead of me just actually sitting down and thinking oh well this might be useful down the road but eventually I don't use it I add that in the moment and I don't use it later on down the road so it's nice revisiting things so that's always a good thing to do okay so uh, into the actual uh, purpose of this video we're going to create a keybind class, and that is going to be the purpose for that. Let's right click input and go to add a new class. So, the purpose of the keybind is going to map an action, a string action, let's say attack. A string action attack in quotes. So, it's string value attack. We're going to map that to a list of key presses. You can attack by space, enter, one, two, or three. You can press any of those buttons to attack. So that was what the keybind is going to be used for. It's going to be public class keybind. Let's add our properties. Public string action get and private set. And let's add our another property for public list of input objects. We're going to call this inputs. We're going to call this inputs. Get and private set. Okay, we're going to add a constructor at the top. Public key bind opening and closing parentheses. String action, and we're going to have the ability for the person using this library to add an initial input. It's going to be optional though, so we're going to default that to null. So, public key bind the parameters are going to be action and an input. Initial input, that's going to be defaulted to null. So action is equal to action. Inputs is equal to new list of input. If 
initial input does not equal to null, we're going to add that to the inputs list. Inputs add initial input. Okay. Let's scroll down and let's work on the methods. Public void update. We're going to use the input system for our updating. Input system for each var input in inputs input dot update input system. All right. Public bool check mode. This is going to be used to check to see if any of our inputs for this action have satisfied our the current mode we want to check for. Input mode, input mode. So if any of the inputs satisfy the input mode we are providing, we're going to return true. So we're going to use link for this. If you do not know how to use link, I did a short video, I think over a year ago now, on my channel. It's a C-sharp video, nothing to do with monogame, nothing to do with XNA. It's a language-specific C-sharp. So if, if you do not know that, go check out my channel for link. L-I-N-Q. Let me make a comment for that. L-I-N-Q. Link. Language Integrated Query. So we're going to call inputs.any. Alright, so this is going to, we're going to create a predicate for this. So that is going to check all inputs. Now we need to assign a name for our current our current input. So I'm just going to use i. i equals and then greater than angled bracket i dot mode is equal to input mode. So this checks if any of our inputs in this list, if any of their mode, if any of their modes equal the input mode we're passing, it returns true. Otherwise it will return false. The last method we want to do is if we want to add additional inputs to our list. So public void, there's no reason to have a list if we can't add more items to the list. So vo public void add input input. Inputs dot add input. Okay. So let's do a quick overview on what we just did. So we have two properties here. A strain action that controls what we want to name our keybind. For example, attack. We might be able to attack with space or enter or the number one key or whatever. Whatever buttons you want to use as the attack buttons, you use a keybind for that. That brings us to the second property, which is a list of inputs. List of inputs. We have one action and a list of inputs. Attack. Attack can be a list of inputs, which could be space, enter, or number one. Now we have the constructor. When we create a new keybind, we have to provide the action. We have the option to provide the initial input. Next, we have the update method, which uses the input system for updating. It will loop through all input values and update based off the input system. Next, we will check the mode. 
it will check all input values, all input objects by the provided input mode that we want to check for. It uses the link, which extends the I enumerable and adds the any method. And we use a predicate to check to see if input.mode is equal to the input mode we pass in. We could have 50 inputs in our list, but only one of those has to be successful. If, if I can attack by space, enter, or one, I can just hit space and attack. The enter and one do not have to be pressed in order to attack because I'm pressing space. So if any of those have that input mode, we have successfully, it's true. And the last one, we need a way to add more input objects to our list. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next video, we will discuss the input map. So I hope to see you next time.